day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. God bless. Love you. Let's pray. Danny, Father, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to come to worship and praise your holy name. Father, you said when two or three are gathered in your name, you'll be in the midst of them. Heavenly Father, we now invite you to receive the presence of the Holy Spirit to come up and be in the midst of us. Father, you're already with us, and we ask you, Heavenly Father, to anoint us to hear the word of God and our hearts are made to receive the word of God. I thank you, Heavenly Father, for the brothers that are here because it's not an accident. We believe that those who are ordained for this time and this hour are here to hear the word of God that you have ordained for them for this day. I ask Heavenly Father to anoint us, to, to, to move forward and, and, and renew our minds in the things of God. And I pray for the family members. I, I pray, Heavenly Father, these brothers, Lord, that they, they be here no longer than what they're supposed to be. I pray, Heavenly Father, if they're here because of wrong reasons and wrong judgments, that they be delivered and, and be restored back to society. I pray, Heavenly Father, that we continue to just grow in the Lord knowing that it's all in our mind first that our freedom comes. I thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, amen. amen. Go ahead and read that for me. Oh, this is in the NIV. Romans 12. Therefore, I urge you, brother, if you are God mercy, to offer your body as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but transform you by renewing the renewing of your mind. Amen. Then you will be able to you be able to test and approve what God will is. Yes. It's good and pleasing and perfect will. Yes, sir. And see the thing about it was saying if you catch that the saying is don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed. One of the things in Christianity I just wanted to, to throw at most of you and and maybe this could, what I say applies not just here, it applies where? Out there. It applies to the fact is that in this world, we are born and raised to conform to this world. We even have an education system that conforms to this world. And, and, and when we come into the body of Christ, one of the things that a Christian got to understand is you have to renew your mind to an image, to be conformed and transform, that means that's an action, right? That means I'm, if, I'm, if I'm transforming, I'm moving from what I'm not supposed to be to those things that he wants me to be. You know what I mean? So a lot of cases when we grow up, most of us, all of us, every last one of us, are, are really growing up based on the input that other people gives us. Start off with our parents. And then as we get older, we start making, making friends. And then we get a little older into the high school, we, we really start getting inputs from other people, right? How many of us, we know a lot of people, and it's, it's not negative in the sense of people pouring their knowledge and their understanding of life into you. It just depends on who's pouring it into you. You know, hopefully most of us had parents that, that poured some sense of doing the right things in life. But in the reality, we have a lot of people, even as we grow up, all the way from high school to, to being a, a, a young adult to, to all of us being even older. There are some people who give us inputs of our life, pouring into our hearts, pouring into our minds, and at the time, some of that seemed to be right. But in some cases, it's wrong. And in most cases, they're doing it because that was passed down to them. Huh? And then when we come to the body of Christ, and sometimes we, 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 you want to say about Christianity, and I want you all to turn to Philippians chapter 3 if you can. Uh, as, as, and I'll keep talking as you're getting there. But even when we come into the body of Christ, a lot of cases, we come into the body of Christ acting we look at some of those TV shows of like Greenleaf and and there's some TV shows I don't know how many shows y'all get to see but there's another show out there called Saints and Sinners uh, and there's plenty of shows where they had the church folks but in the act huh? uh, Philippians chapter 3 
and they act the way the church supposed to be. No, I guess they, they act the way they see the church to be. Uh, you haven't seen this TV show. Have you ever seen uh, Greenleaf? Uh, kind of heard of it? But the bottom line is what you have is a, is a basic a church family, a church ministry. You got people coming into church. You got the choir. You got all this, all those things. But at the same time, in the, in the background of, of, of ministries, the business side of ministries, all the adultery and the, the manipulation and then and and then the the, the the scheming and plotting and, and jealousy and, and homosexuality and all those things that that supposed to be in the world are also portrayed in the TV show. It is a very popular TV show. You know why it's popular? Because people first they're drawn because it's saying it's saying it's a church type thing, but it ain't like that once you actually find out what it's all about. You get some church gospel singing. You get some people preaching sometimes, but all other stuff, you, you kind of wonder. People like bad stuff. Well, and the thing about it is that because we, in the world, draws bad stuff. Even when y'all was growing up, you remember when there was a fight? Y'all ran to the fight. Remember that? Oh, it's going to be a fight. Everybody is going to be where the fight is going to be. Right? And, and nobody's going to break the fight up. Everybody come to see who's going to win or lose in the fight. Because we're going by the world's way. Ain't nobody going to try to help anybody. We're just going to see who get beat up. You know? So when we grew up, we grow up with our minds set based on how the world wants us to be. I'm just telling you. Even from, from racism. You know? People grow up. There's people who are supposed to be the victims, and there's supposed to be people to say I'm superior, and they, they're raised that way and thinking that way because the world system tells them that way. But that's not God's way. And what I'm trying to tell you is that when you come into the body of Christ, that Bible there is not meant to be just a, a, a symbol. It, it is supposed to be a, a tool, all right? The, and one of the things I want to bring that, and I don't know if you heard it before, but the Bible said the just shall live by faith. You hear me? The just shall live by faith. Well, let me tell you something about that. You as an individual, every last one of us, live by food and water. Correct? So because our bodies need food and water, right? But our spirit needs the word of God. In most cases, when we talked about church folks and so forth, we're focusing on going to church on Sunday. Some of us even go to church mid-Wednesday or midweek, some of us. But majority of us go on Sunday. Now, the just shall live by faith. Yet we live by water, food and water every day. But if we go by our spirit, if we, if we, if we live our life, just the way we live by our spirit life, if we live, I eat our food and drink our water the same way, we're drinking water seven days a week. Excuse me, one day out of seven days. And we'll be eating one day out of the week. Would that work? It won't work. It won't work. Did you, so my point is that really, in, in, in the only way you renew your mind, is renewing your mind by the things of God. And that's what God wants us to do. So look at Philippians chapter 3. And uh, look, we'll go ahead and get about 15 minutes, if y'all mind. Uh, let me know when you're there. And if, if, if look at the table of content uh, if you can't find it. Because, you know, I went to a word church. When I, when I first go into a word church back in 1990 something, you know, at first I didn't start going to church until I graduated from college. I just want to know, let you know that. But I went to a word church, and, and, and you know, they're telling you to get your Bible out and turn to a scripture. And, you know, I didn't know where those scriptures were. And we found out that a lot of people didn't know where those scriptures were. And they said, as they ordained it, they did. Go to the table of content. It's in the beginning of the book. It looks for Philippians. 
And see, now another thing too, we we as one of the things about even studying to show ourselves approved and then people come to the body of Christ, we need to help each other. We need to help each other. We're sitting there letting everybody struggle. And 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 I remember back in War Changes, this is why I used to go to Clef for Dollars, is that when they stop hearing the pages turn, the, the people stop looking. And and they could be wearing Hebrews and we talking about Philippians. Because we don't give people time. This is a study group. So I'm gonna give you time. So you found Philippians? You found you looked at the table of content first? Chapter three. You found it first? Okay. All right. Because it's good, it's important for you to know. We're supposed to equip the saints. That's what that's what ministry is about. Equipping the saints to do the work of the ministry. So one of the work is how to get into the word. Amen. Now in verse 12 in Philippians, I'm reading from the King James Version. It says right here, and I'm reading, I'm going to read till about, let me see, uh, verse 21. So I'm starting at verse 12. And it says, not though I had already obtained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Jesus Christ. I'm going to stop right there. It's very clear that though I had not already attained, most of the people need to understand, Paul is the person who wrote this. He's the author of this particular book. And he's telling you, I have not already attained. When we come into the body of Christ, we should come to the body of Christ as we are. Meaning, I don't know where the scriptures are. I don't know how to read the Bible. And in some cases, I don't even know I'm saved. Because nobody told me how to be saved. But Paul is trying to tell you, I have not, I have not yet attained. I have not yet apprehended. What he's trying to say is, I ain't all that in a bag of potato chips. And I'm telling you, I'm not all that in a bag of potato chips. And I know that none of you are all that in a bag of potato chips. But God says, come as you are. And don't be an act. It's not about acting. I'd rather you be yourself. Come into the body of Christ as yourself. If you sit there and say, I still got a party to party. Allow God to change you on your timetable and let God change me on my timetable. And I should not judge you based on where you are in the scheme of how God is changing you. That's what God is trying to say. This is what the Bible is saying. I, verse 12, not as though I have already attained, either were already perfect. And sometimes we come into the body of Christ trying to play perfect. I mean, since we put on the mask, I'm saying take the mask off. Be yourself. At least I know who I'm dealing with. Huh? At least you know who you're dealing with. We don't need to be a, a bunch of actors. We need to just be somebody trying to grow in the things of God. Amen? He said, brethren, verse 13, brothers, I count not myself to have apprehended, but look, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things, what? Which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. See, you can't change the past. And I'm going to let you know, son, tomorrow is not promised. But you can work on the day. But a lot of cases, and we talked, I was in the carols, we just did carols last week. And one of the things I was talking about is that we talk about unforgiveness, or we talk about people getting in your head and getting in your mind. It's like you have a hotel room in your mind, and somebody has checked in it, and they are now with you all the time. They're, and you, they're with you, even though they're not physically with you. And you said, holding on to what they did years ago, because they have rented a room in your mind. You know, the Bible said, and Jesus said, and the commandments he gave, two great commandments he gave. He said to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and all thy mind. 
and then love your neighbor yourself. It's a critical part of God trying to say to love, to love the Lord that God, all that heart, all that soul, all that mind, so that nobody can be occupying the rooms in your mind. You want to get to the point where the saying is, there's no vacancies. I don't have time for you to be in my mind. Especially when the fact is that you're going to sit there and go and do everything you're going to do. And you still occupy my mind. You still I got you on my mind. I'm still thinking about you. And God is saying this, love the Lord thy God with all that heart, with all that soul. You see what I'm saying? God is saying, one of the things that protects you mind so you can vacate those things that don't need to be in there. Think about that. It's a mind game. Life is a mind game. The battles of life is based on the mind. You do things, you make it somewhere in life based on your determination and setting your point and say, I'm going to do this. Did you know that wherever you, if, for some of us, some of you that are in here, you had it in your mind of what you were going to do before you did it. And then reality came and you did it. But it first started where? Does anybody think that there anything, if, just in case some of you, and now some of you may be here wrong, I, I don't know. But let's come to the ones who are not. Did you not vision what you was going to do before you did it? Huh? You had it already in there. It was already in your mind. Then you try to execute it. But, you know, the problem with, with, with executing something, especially when we're not trying to do it God's way, we're trying to do it in our own way, we don't plan everything. We, don't, we, don't, we seem to go with the, the conclusion of what we want, but not the consequences that comes with it. No, about a year ago, then when it happened again. Mm-hmm. And the bad thing about it, it doesn't happen the way, especially if it's not the things of God. That's why God said, I'd rather you have me in your mind. I'd rather have my word in your mind. Because then when you guarantee you, he'll bring to pass what he wants for your life. Amen? But the only thing we got to do is forget those things which are behind. Because I can't change that. Did you know when Jesus gave the Lord's Prayer, he said, give us this day? I want you all to understand that. Give us this day. Why? Because this is the day I want you to deal with. This is the day what makes a difference. Not yesterday. Yes. Yesterday won't make a difference. But tomorrow may come but based on what you do today. That's why God said he gave the Lord's Prayer. Give us this day our daily bread. Huh? He even told me, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. His kingdom. His way. We have to renew our way in that, though. But if we don't do that, we're going to be like Paul is saying. He said, you must forget those things which are behind and reach and forth to those things which are before you. See, all of you will walk out of here one day. You, that, that's the truth, right? That's the truth. You're going to leave here one day. You should be walking and pressing toward that day. You should be prepping yourself toward that day. If you don't have a GED, you need to get a GED. And if you need anything else that they can provide for you, get everything you can to prep for that day. But you get you in an environment where some people are not even thinking about tomorrow. They're just thinking about trying to get over today. God said you got to renew your mind. Verse 14, I press. Now, just to get you on that, to press means that there's a force there's something that's pushing against where you're trying to go. Every last one of you want to get out of here, right? There's something pressing against you to get what you want to go. But you, he's telling you, you got to, you, you got to push back. You got to press. I don't care if it's a wind. I don't care if it's the rain. I don't care if these walls. You got to press. And your life toward the things that are before you. you got a whole life to live. And you need to press toward it. But you want to press toward a life that does not bring you back here. That's critical. That's why he said, I need you to have your focus on me. He said, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God where? In Christ Jesus. 
If I sit there and try to press toward those things of people who are not a good influence, I'm going to destruction is where I'm going. That's what's going to happen. He said first in verse 15, listen, y'all, let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus what? Minded. You see that in there? See what it said right there, right? Does it say that? Be thus minded. And if anything be otherwise, what? Minded. Yeah, I know. My King James Version is saying minded. What you want to say? I'm in verse 15. What you want to say? Mind? You want to say minded? Yeah. Because I want to tell you guys, this is a mind game. It's what's in your mind. God wants him to be fill all your mind because there's other things in there. What you want to say? This mind. That's what I'm trying to say. This mind. If anything be otherwise minded, that's why a Christian need to renew their mind. If, if, if you present to me anything that is otherwise minded toward the things of God, I need to put that back. I can't receive it. I can't receive failure. I can't receive that which is not profitable. I can only receive that which helps me get to my goal in life. What I want to do when I get out of here. Because if your mind is just to get out the gate, you, you, you're failing because you're not prepping for what you're going to do when you walk out the gate. You have to be minded to the things that are perfect toward God. God wants you to be profitable. Jesus said, I came to give life and life more abundantly. He said that. I'm not quoting something. You're not making it up. He said to give you abundant life. So I want that abundant life for you. He wants that abundant life for you, but you must be dust minded. Right? He said, if anything be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Does that say that to yours? Amen? See, the reason I have, like I like to have a rejector, you read I always had a rejector because I would you see what I'm seeing. So you can come, you can follow me. But you, you got your book in front of you, so follow me with that book, okay? Verse 16. Nevertheless, whereunto we have already obtained, let us walk by the same what? Rules. What you all say? Rules? Does it say rules? That's 16. By the same rule. That young lady there got rules that y'all have to follow. You follow the rules, we're in the same track. You follow another rule, then we're off track. Let us mind the same thing. Be on one accord. Brethren, be followers together of me. And mark them which walk so as you have us for an example. Mark the ones who's walking right. Mark the ones who's walking wrong so you can say, I ain't going that way. Huh? So you have to see, you have to see who's going the right, who's going, you have to see who's going your way. If I'm playing basketball, I don't need somebody to come trying to play baseball on the basketball court. I don't need somebody to play football on the basketball court. You need to play by the rules of the what? The game. But that's what happens when we want to try to walk outside this world, do it our own way. We don't have the same mind. God wants to have the same mind. He said, Brother 17, 7, verse 17. Brothers, be followed together of me and mark them which walk so as you have us an example. For many walk of whom I have told you often. And now tell you even weeping. I can relate to Paul. Even weeping, Paul has said, even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. There's plenty of people out there that are the enemies of the cross of the Christ. There's plenty of people that are the enemy to your life. Christ's cross is to bring you salvation, but there's enemies that want to give you to another rule, another way, and it takes you to another path. But follow Christ. He said, verse 19, 
Look at that. What, what does verse 19, what's that part, this, the first part of verse 19 say? Mine say they destiny. <laughs> destiny. What? In of whose end, you got that? Whose end is destruction. It's funny. Some of you have dealt with people who in led you here to destruction. And they're not even, they, they didn't even come with you. And they ain't even calling you. Huh? You got some people calling you from the past? No. no. I'm going to say that sometimes this ain't always destruction. Sometimes it's the best thing that happens. Well, I, 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 would, I would submit to you. Yeah. I mean, I'll submit to you where the person, if, if, it's, if it's leading to abundant life, then that's good. That's, that's what you have to see. Follow those that are the same mind and just follow the same rules that allows you to be where you want to be in life. Those who told you to drop out, they ain't following the rules of life. You need education. You need a job. Someone's going to be a billionaire if you wanted to, but you know, you got to just work to become a billionaire, right? Or billionaire. There's some sacrifices that you got to make. But I guarantee you, but if you don't, if you don't at least mark a path to get there, destruction. That's all I'm saying. Anything that destroys your dream, anything that destroys where you want to be in life, is called destruction. Your dream, your vision, what you want in life. Now, correct me wrong. Just even being here, this is not your vision of life, is it? If it is, it shouldn't be. No, no, well, the thing about the thing about Joseph is Joseph was ordained by God, right. and you ever know, son? Joseph never complained, and everywhere right. Joseph, everywhere Joseph went, he ran the house. He even ran the prison. That's bad, ain't it? Man, man in prison, running the prison, because it was. But they also he saved a whole nation. His own people, he saved. So don't get me wrong. If if you end up here, but remember, Joseph didn't do anything wrong. Right. Yeah. It was just, and 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 that's 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 good. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, some people ain't doing nothing wrong. But we do the event. We use that time then to say, God, I'm gonna believe in you to get me out of here. Amen. If somewhere along the line, justice shall be done. Amen. And that's why I think he wants us to be mindful. Because, you know, there's enough people sitting there saying it ain't going to happen. He wants you to stay focused. I got to really go. I'm sorry. Let me see here. Verse 20. For our conversation. Listen to this, y'all. Verse 20. Read what the Amplified Bible says. But I I like this part about the fact that our conversation is in heaven. Are you catching me? The conversation. Are you there? He's not there. He's, he's trying to find it. Uh, you, you catch what I'm coming from? Our conversation. How, what are the conversations of the past? What are the conversations of the people that you used to talk to? What are the conversations of the people you used to hang around with? What are the conversations of the people you're dealing with now in the yard? Back then, before I found my Lord Jesus Christ, we had conversations Come on, bro. You see what I'm saying is, listen to the conversations that's coming around the people around you. If somebody told you to drop out, that, that, see, that the conversation was wrong. If somebody tell you to do something that's out of the, gets the law, the conversation, he's saying, let our conversation be in heaven. For whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Who, listen to this, now this is probably like, who should, look at it, verse 21. Now you can just read, if you want, you just can listen to me, but I just, if I want, I want you to be able to see the Bible too. He says, who shall change our vow body 
that we may be fashioned like unto his glorious body. I'm going to wrap up. We'll wrap up. His glorious body. According to the working whereby he is able, he is able to subdue all things. He's able to open those doors. He's able to keep you from coming. Because the matter that I really was more of a, I'm not more important than keeping you from coming back. He's able to subdue all things. That's why you even heard people say, in Christ, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The Bible wants you to renew your mind toward the things of God. Forgetting those things, I can't, you can't change the past. Forget the things of the past. Focus on where you Focus on the, you know, when it said just by faith, do y'all know what the uh, definition of faith is? Hebrews 11, it's, verse 1. I'm, I'm quite, it, it, and let's make sure we get everybody's here. Now, now, verse, you can just turn to Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11, 1. Hebrews 11, 1. Like I said, use the table of content. Use the table of content because that's that's how you want to learn how to read the Bible. We, when I was in Word Change, we had, we got to the point getting tabs. We we tabbed the Bible. You know what I mean? So you can find it. But you know, I, I do I do it. It's kind of encouraging. Maybe I should start just using this, not bringing the, the uh, putting the projector. But then again, I want it up because I don't have a limited time. The sister's giving me some time, and I'm going I'm gonna get out of here. But I, I wanted to, to to encourage you guys that learn. You, you have to study the Bible. Study together as a group. You know what I mean? Sometimes get together. And you, what, what, if you got time, get together and, and study the word of God. But, but use the word of God when you study it. And then say, what does that word mean? You know what I mean? But Hebrews 11. You didn't find that yet? I know you went to the table con I tell you what, the table con table content in the front. That's a day. That's anointed. <laughs> that table content is a day by God. Huh? Huh? So as you're getting there, the problem line is that that table of content is anointed to help guide you. By the fact, those verses and everything, that's how the, the original manuscript was not written with verses. It, it was just, it was a continuous writing. We, you know, we had to learn to break that thing and put it more organized for people of our time to read. Mine, Hebrews 11. Mine says, believe in your faith is being, uh, believe in the things you hope for, certain other things that you have since seen. Nah, and, 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 and I, want, I want to get this piece there. I like the fact that I agree with that. That's, a, you know, what, when you see it, are you there yet? Hebrews 11, verse 1. Now. See, I want to, not only do I want to get to the point of, of why I like the King James Version to a point, I'm just saying is, because the Amplified is a guy who's bringing it, breaking it down further for how he understands it. I want to be able to dissect the, the scriptures in the sense that fit now, now, it's now, it's right now, faith is right now. The substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Huh? It's the, see, the, the, you live by faith, man, you live by hope. You live by, you, in other words, he wants that imagination to be focused on where you're going. You want to see, my fact, if, if, see, I'm not hoping to, to be in here and not be able to walk out of here. You see what I'm saying? I don't mind being in here to minister, but I'm not, I don't have no hope or desire to be in here and wearing white and blue stripes. God is saying is you, to, you just because you're here, your mind, you see what I'm saying? Your mind needs to focus on not here, but where I'm going. Because it's just to live by faith. God needs to see the blueprint in your mind in order for you so he can do something to bring in the past. And I close with this. I'm going to close with this. I want you to turn to Genesis. It's the, big, it's the first book in the Bible. 
And we're going to close with Genesis. Genesis 11, first book in the Bible. Because when I when God tells you that the just should live by faith, he has a purpose for that. That purpose is for you to understand the power of imagination, the power that's in the mind. Yes, sir, it's the Tower of Babel. I don't, I don't know if you ever heard this before, but, but you don't know why what, did he said the just should live by faith. It's because God knows that your power rests in your imagination. Amen. To please God, right? For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and he's a reward of them who diligently seek him, right? Check this out. I'm going to close with this. This is he, Genesis 11, and I'm going to read starting at verse 1. And I'm going to finish in verse 9. Are you ready? This is the first book in the Bible. Nobody can miss it. Everybody can be in accord with me now. All right? You ready? And the whole world was of one language and one speech. And it came to pass that they journeyed to the east, that they found a plain in the land of Shinar. And they dwelled there. And they said to one another, Go to, let us build brick and burn them thoroughly, that they had bricks for stone and slime, for they had mortar. mortar. And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower who top may reach well up, all the way to heaven. They're going to try to get to heaven. Look, we try to get a space shuttle up. They try to build from the ground up all the way to heaven. And it says right here. <laughs> well, man, I lost my whole thing. It said, and let us make a name, us a name. Let us be scattered, unless we be scattered abroad upon the face of the earth. And the Lord God came down to see the city and the tower. Now, I want y'all to know something. You probably didn't catch this. They said, let's go do. So they have not done. They said, let's go do. You Are you with me? But God said, let's go see what they have built. Right? God said, and the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, and this they began to do. They began. See, I've said it wasn't built, right? This they began to do. I'm leaving you with so I'm gonna leave you a good nugget here. Now, look at I want you to read that. Now nothing will be restrained from them which what? They have imagined to do. Are you with me? Huh? Chapter 11. Genesis chapter 11. The verse I want you to remember is verse 6. Verse 6. And I like you. To, I would like you to see the word, the King James verse, imagine to do. The just shall live by faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Hope is based on my imagination. It's what's in my mind. What's in your mind? God said, if I can see the hope in your mind, and nothing will be restrained from you, the power is within your mind. God is trying to tell you that's why he wants you to live by your mind. Live by your imagination. And the key to it, though, is, which I'm going to talk about the guys of tomorrow, is the power of God operating in your behalf. Amen. See, God scattered them because they're trying to operate on their own ability. God is trying to tell you, I want you to have faith so I can pull the imagination and bring it to pass. Because faith is the sort of things hope for. So he said, are you walking by hope? Or are you walking by dread and depression? You remember when you, I know y'all, all y'all had Christmas before. You remember when you look kids and you, Christmas coming and the next day be Christmas? 
How many were so excited they couldn't even go to sleep? Why? Because your imagination had something good to be hoping for. That's what God wants us to live our life is to imagine getting out, prospering. Amen? That's what it's all about, y'all. You got to renew your mind. So I appreciate y'all having the time to come. Sorry we didn't have all the the other stuff we normally set up with. I pray y'all come again. I come on the first Wednesday and the fourth Saturday. Amen? Let's, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this opportunity where we got together in your word. I pray, Father, that what you want to say has been said. I pray, Heavenly Father, that every word that you use, every word that we read from this book, it soaks into their hearts and in their minds. I pray, Heavenly Father, they walk by faith, not by sight. Being in these walls, that's by sight. But being free and walking away from this building, walking away from this place, one day and sometime will happen because they have the faith that you will bring into pass. Not by their ability, not by their power, but by you. I pray, Heavenly Father, that every last one of them will be able to walk out these gates one day. And I pray that when they walk out, they give you the praise and the glory and realize that everything they do in life is from the blessing that comes from you. And they always trust in you and listen to you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name, pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, brothers. I appreciate you coming. And I, I appreciate a young lady. Let me be here for a little bit. I've been over time.